Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, the Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture, and here he is, Michael Savage. But I said in my State of the Union address this year, I am convinced that progress comes together when we work together. And we work together best when we're willing to understand one another. When instead of having debates over talk radio... Here he goes, attacking the First Amendment. Government zero. I rest my case. Good night. You have a dictator in the White House. He is the smoothest and most able field commander communism has ever had. He is far smarter than Karl Marx and Lenin put together. He has conducted a silent revolution in this nation without firing a shot, without lining anyone up against the wall and having them shot. He has decapitated the military, destroyed the schools, and now he's going after the First Amendment. Welcome to the program. Now, as you well know, my book, uh, Government Zero, is a raging bestseller after one day. Although it hasn't been declared so yet, I know it will be so. I know many of you have gone out and cleaned out the shelves. And what am I going to do with it? Buy, buy a new car? Buy a new house? I'm not building a beach house in Florida. I'm not buying a new car. I have a new car. I don't want another house. What am I doing this for? Don't you understand that there are books that can change the course of human events? This is one of them. I'll make the uh, analogy again. <clears throat> when I was young college student book came out called silent spring by rachel carson i didn't read the book i didn't know what it meant but i knew the title said something silent spring silent spring what does she mean by that well she meant that if we didn't stop overusing pesticides and poisoning the earth all the birds would die it would destroy the food chain and we'd have a silent spring she caused the, eco the ecological revolution of the 60s with one book I am trying to cause a political revolution with government zero. I need you to spread the message. And so what I've done for you today is I put together some questions that liberals often state or statements that liberals often make to you, conservatives, and quoted a paragraph or a sentence from my book and the exact page. For example, liberal statement. Oh, Obama's presidency is nearly is not as bad as you think. We have Obamacare, the country is thriving economically, and we're becoming an even more diverse society <clears throat> during his time in office. Answer, pages four and five. The government can act in its own interests only by acting against yours. That's why the government is attacking everything that makes the world livable for the rest of us. It is promoting open borders because immigrants from socialist or Islamic countries don't share our tra traditions of individual liberty and limited government. Government wages a war on the police because civil unrest allows it to exercise more centralized power or even martial law. Government attacks freedom of speech because dissent is like kryptonite to an all-powerful government. We are well on the road to replacing the former Soviet system with an emerging USSA, the United Soviet States of America, pages four and five of Government Zero. Liberal statement, something you may hear from your deranged commie cousin who you still love. Or your brother-in-law, who looks like Bernie Sanders, the type with foul breath, a bad suit, the type who grabs your lapel at a cocktail party or a Seder, holds your lapel while poking you in the chest and spritzes you in the face, and says things like, more cultural and religious diversity in the nation is a good thing. Why are you saying it's not? Answer, pages 158161, government zero, where I write, what country is this? It wasn't too long ago that America was still a first world nation, which led the world in commerce and military might. Despite decades of progressive assault, private property, free enterprise, Judeo-Christian values, and respect for the law and order still dominated American culture. But today, because of Obama and the progressives, the entire foundation of American society is crumbling under attack by the progressive Islamist alliance that hasn't neglected reshaping our entire nation. Statement three from a lib. 
This is just another liberal, bad, conservative, good book that as everyone has heard before. Well, answer is this. Government Zero looks at both sides. For example, Chapter 13, Saving a Nation with Nationalism. It even starts out with the idea that we must abandon conservatism as a defining principle. The word conservative itself has become meaningless. Liberal statement number four that you may hear when you try to reason with some of your neighbors or friends. You're just xenophobic. You can't stand the thought of more people not of the same color coming into the country. Why are you afraid of immigrants? Answer pages 158 to 161. You cannot have a country without borders. If you do, your country doesn't exist. Chapter 7. Zero immigration lays out why it is dangerous to allow anyone in the country without knowing who they are, why they are here, and whether they're truly coming to live the American dream, not just to import their country's values or even worse, to do harm to Americans. There's an article on michaelsavage.com that I found this morning from World Net Daily out of Australia. You're not going to believe this story. Muslim kids were allowed to walk out as the Australian national anthem was being played in a classroom. Did you hear what I just said to you? Muslim kids found the Australian national anthem offensive and were allowed to walk out. Why? To whom do they um, salute loyalty to? Who is, their, who is the uh, loyalty that they devote themselves to? Muslim kids walk out as national anthem sung. Did you hear the story? Parents of students at Cranbourne Carlisle Primary School were furious when Principal Cheryl Irving allowed Muslim students to exit a school assembly last week during the national anthem, October 13th through November 12th which is considered a mourning period over the death of Imam Hussein, the grandson of Muhammad. By the way, that's who your president is named for. Barack Hussein Obama is named for Imam Hussein, the grandson of Muhammad. You, did you know any of that? His middle name isn't Jesus. Is it Barack Jesus Obama? Imagine if we had a president. What if it was Mitt Jesus Romney? Could you imagine what the vermin on MSNBC would have uh, done with that one? You remember that? Mitt, Jesus, Romney, we can't have a Christian in the White House, an open Christian. But Barack Hussein Obama, no problem. They ushered him right in. Muram is a Shia cultural observation marking the death of Imam Hussein. So two children got up and said, well, we don't feel comfortable in this. Then 30 or 40 of them got up and left the room. Then the Muslim kids came back in. Can you imagine being invited into a nation, living on welfare, getting free education, free medication, free legal services. Can you imagine then walking out on the national anthem of that nation? You think it's happening only in Australia? No, my friends. No, my friends. You know, there used to be a phrase about assimilation, and now the phrase has become accommodation. Instead of assimilating, so many of our dear immigrants are not assimilating. We're accommodating them. And that's the opening to my show. The phone number is 855-407-282. If you get a call on your experiences in your local bookstore, were the liberal punks in the store courteous, or did you get negative looks and comments? Did you have trouble finding Government Zero at the bookstore? What have clerks told you about Government Zero? Was it front and center in Barnes & Noble on the octagon table as paid for? Or was it hidden below Jane has three mommies in the feminine hygiene section? Did you purchase a copy for yourself? Did you buy one for your wife? Who do you think needs to read this book most? Let's go to the callers beginning in New York City. Jeff, thanks for calling from WABC. What's on your mind? Thank you, Michael. Um, yeah, I checked out two Barnes and Nobles. I was in uh, Morris Plains, New Jersey, last night with my young son, and your book was proudly displayed on the octagon tables. I saw it as soon as I walked in. Today, I work at Rutgers University. I went into the Barnes and Noble in New Brunswick, New Jersey, and um, I couldn't find your book anywhere. And I asked at the customer service desk, and I, I simply said, "Do you have Michael Savage?" And before I even said the name of the book, they said, "No." Well, now, what did the clerk look like? Well, give me a, a picture. Uh, the clerk was a uh, middle-aged white male, um, white hair, slight beard. Uh, In other words, a, co a commie collaborator, a Bernie Sanders type. And I, I was going to make a stink, but I work at Rutgers, and I was in my uniform, and I, I fear for my job right now. So, 
Oh, well, of course, you live in a free country, don't you? Where you can, you can even buy any book you want at Rutgers, as long as it's not a conservative book, like uh, Government Zero. Well, I'm sending you a free copy, my friend. Thanks for standing up for America. Thanks for standing up for Michael Savage. That opens up one line at 855-407-282. If you get on with Savage, you'll meet more people on the air than you've ever spoken with in your entire life. And again, don't get panicky. Don't get frightened. Make believe you're talking to a friend. Because although there's hundreds of thousands of people every 15 minutes who tune in and out of this show, uh, you're only really talking to me. And that's the way to do it without getting nervous. Many people want to call the show. They're afraid to call the show. They get frightened. And they shouldn't. Just think of it that way. Now, it is true that in any 15 minutes, think of the largest football stadium in America. Now, triple it. That's the size of the audience at any time listening to the show. But you're not actually standing in the stadium addressing those hundreds of thousands. You're talking to your old friend, Uncle Michael Savage. And so I invite you to call at 855-407-282. Liberals are especially invited to call, especially the liberals who are so progressive uh, that they haven't read the book, but they know it's no good. They know it's not up to their standards. Uh, speaking of liberals and books, I want to read you a few of the reviews. Now, one of the best ones was written by, I, I hope it, I looked at, on the Amazon reviews. Naturally, you get the haters who don't even read, who go on immediately and start talking about things that have nothing to do with the book. And I want to find the uh, the review which I can't find. I had it this morning. <laughs> I'll have it a little while. The one that I want the, the, the most. Here it is. I got it. No, that's not the one. Yeah, okay. This one was written by a, a writer named Scribendi. And he says, The great 18th century conservative Edmund Burke, foreshadowing Savage, once wrote that society cannot exist unless a controlling power upon will and appetite be placed somewhere and the less of it there is within the more of it there must be without wow within the confines of this wonderful book michael savage grimly chronicles the complete and utter disintegration and destruction of america in a way that surely would cause burke to crack a smile in the grave what savage is describing in his usage of the term government zero surely would have interested the late great writer sam francis who himself coined the term anarcho tyranny we refuse to control real criminals, that's the anarchy, so we control the innocent, that's the tyranny. Savage is all too aware that America dangles precariously at the precipice of no return. The dumbed-down leftist indoctrination taught within public government schools has utterly crippled generations of Americans through K-12 brainwashing and teaches them to utterly despise and actively work to destroy America. Her collective Anglo-Saxon heritage and her Christian Protestant faith, its fruits are the suicidal miseducation of a nation via the cults of multiculturalism and egalitarianism. We witness this most starkly in the entire life and career of Barack Hussein Obama, to the detriment, of course, of the historic American nation. Savage knows that my generation of millennials have been educated in curriculum and textbooks written by domestic terrorist Bill Ayers and his fellow criminals which has produced the social justice warrior racial grievance generation. Combined with the toxic psychological narcissism of Facebook, thanks Zuck, America has millions upon millions of wannabe Kardashians and Black Panthers, a people whose political, moral, and civic knowledge is tragically limited to whatever toxic garbage gets retweeted by the Black Lives Matter cult and fawned over by a hagiographic lying mass media. Savage is a man who in his youth and folly literally doled out the acid for Timothy Leary. I didn't, by the way, at Millbrook. I was at Millbrook, but I was the only one who didn't use acid. I was the gatekeeper. Is a wise, very conservative, and hilariously funny man who broadcasts daily from within his refuge of the People's Republic of San Francisco. Listen to Savage, read Government Zero, and please, fellow Amazon patrons, let's take America back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Hey, our Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust for wealth insurance, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. <laughs> 